This is question seven from the 2019 Ordinary Level Leaving Cert paper. You can find a link to an image of this question in the description below if you do not have one yourself. This is a section B question, so it's very big, lots of different parts. They love to make you answer lots of small questions really, but read lots of English, understand what's going on in every, bit, every part. So lots of students have trouble in this. So let me try and step you through it as best I can. On the board, I've taken down some of the information for parts A, B, and C. You'll have to forgive my drawing. It's not ruled. These spaces are not perfect. So my answers are actually gonna come out a little different, but I do have the correct answers on a page and I can give you those numbers, those numbers from the, the marking scheme. But really, every student will have slightly different answers on this question. I just want to warn you that mine might be much worse than most people because of how badly uh, scaled my drawing will be. Okay, with that said, let's jump into this question. Part A asks us to find the height of the ball when it is hit by this goalkeeper, this Komogi goalkeeper. Now this question gave lots of students problems. They weren't sure where to begin. The trick here was to notice that they told you when the ball was hit. They didn't tell you where the ball was, they told you when the ball was hit. They told you the ball was hit at the start, when t equals zero. At the start of time, the ball was hit. So that means t equals zero. So really, the height of the ball, because that's what this equation tells us, the height of the ball is just f zero. And if we know zero, we just fill it in. Minus four, zero squared, let's put brackets around this, and um, plus 16, zero, plus one. Well, this is just zero times zero times four, zero, zero, and one. We're just left with one. So the answer to part A is just one. And I believe that's in meters, uh, so one meter, which sounds about reasonable. The ball, the height of the ball when it was hit up in the air was one meter. Part B asks us to fill this table out. This table, I've left out some parts there. This table is T and F T. Really, it's time and the height. But we've just done one of these parts. We've just put zero in for the time. So that means this number right here, oops, is one. We need to do the same thing for each of these. We have to do F1, and F1 is equal, and we just fill it in. Let's do the first one, and then we'll skip the rest, and I'll just give you the answers. F1 squared plus 16, ah, I'm doing, I'm, I've skipped 0 0.5. Well, let's, let me finish doing one, and then we'll do 0 0.5 as well. Uh, 16 times one plus one. So in one place, use a calculator. Do not be afraid to use a calculator, it will help. But we'll get one times one times minus four, minus four, plus 16 plus one. That's equal 17 minus four is 13. So we can put 13 in here as an answer. Let me do one more then, 0 0.5. We'll have to be a little slower on this. We'll have to rely on a calculator a little more, I think. There are ways to do it in your head. Um, 0 0.5 squared plus 16 times 0 0.5 plus one. Lots of, a way to, at this point you could do this in a calculator. So I would recommend maybe doing a calculator. But lots of students are happier, me personally, are happier using fractions. I mentioned this in the previous question, I believe. Minus um, four, a half squared, plus 16 times a half, plus one. Or you could change this to three over two, five over two, seven over two. I find this easier to work with. Two twos become four now, four divided by four. This is minus one. 16 times a half, that's eight, plus one. So this becomes, this is equal to eight. Eight is our answer here. I have the answers on a page. Good, we got the first three right. Um, that's good to see. Then next is 16, 17. These are all got the same way, just filling the numbers in. Um, 17, 16 was done for us. 13, you can double check that if you want, if you have time. Maybe you're sitting around the exam with nothing else to do. Feel free to do that. Okay, so that's, that's part B, we're done. And this question will come up every single year. Uh, once, maybe even twice, in fact, a question like this will come up. They'll ask you to fill out numbers and they'll ask you to draw a picture of that question. So we need to draw this picture. So at time zero, the height is one. So we just go over here, let me use a different color. 
So we had a, a time zero, this is the time axis, and this is the height axis. At time zero, the height was one, we put in a dot there. At time 0 0.5, the height was eight. So here's where my drawing is gonna get a little inaccurate. Um, at time one, the height was 13. So you should be using um, the rule page they gave you, so you should get a little better than I do. At time 1.5, it is 16. Um, at time two, it's 17. Time two, about there. Time 2.5, it's 16 again. Time three is 13 again. You might notice some symmetrical there. 17, 16, 13, eight, one. So what we've got, time three is 13. About here, three and a half is eight again. I can do it quicker because I can look across. Four is then one. All right, so they ask us to graph that. This, that means drawing um, a line in between these. They would like to see that you get the correct shape, which means they want a nice smooth curve. So please forgive this drawing. It's harder to do it on a board, I promise. Something like this. So that would be your full marks for part B. They will take marks off if you miss some of these dots. Don't panic too much though. Just use a pencil, rub it out and start again. Start again, just go one smooth line if you can. And um, they do not want to see it done separately, but they will forgive it if that's the only way you can do. Just try and do it nice and clean, but they do not want to see this. It's, that's not too bad, it's not the end of the world, but they do, do not want to see sharp edges. They would like to see smooth edges, okay? Just slightly smoothed out edges. But it can be, what I've drawn here would probably be good enough. They would be happy with this little break here. That's it's not the end of the world. It is fine, once you hit every point. And I've hit just about every point. Okay, so that is part B. That would be your full marks. Okay, C part one asks us, the length of time the ball was in the air from the time it was hit until it landed on the ground. So it's hit here, it's in the air, it's in the air, it's in the air, it's in the air. It doesn't end here, it continues on. So we're being asked to estimate what the shape of this looks like. And it's coming down nice and fast, so I think it will come down something like that. And that would be when it hits the ground. Remember it was hit one meter above the ground and it lands on the ground. So what time would that be? Let me, uh, let me write up some of the answers here. I'll rub this out. So C part one would be this time here, the total time it was in the air. And that would, from my drawing, it's about, well, I also know the correct answer. I've looked it up. It's about 4.1, and that is the correct answer they give in the marking scheme. I'll, I'll try and make mine the correct answer, really, just to help us all out. Okay, so part two then. What did they ask? They asked the length of time the ball was 10 meters or more above the ground. So again, all the information is on this graph. Here is meters. Here is the height. The height is 10 meters here. So what they, I'd like to see... Although you might have drawings on your graph already, I'd like to see a line drawn across here. This is the time the ball was 10 meters above the ground. This is above 10 meters, above 10 meters. So what I need to know is how long was it there? How long is this time? Because that's what this axis is, time. So for that, I'd like to come down. Let me get the correct answers. The correct answers should be 0 0.6. Let's come down here. That would be 0 0.6. And when I say correct answers, it's okay if your answer was slightly different. 0 0.7, 0 0.8 probably would be okay. 0 0.6, these are, well no, zero, anything less than 0 0.5 would be clearly wrong because we have a point of 0 0.5. So probably um, 0 0.55 to 0 0.65, if you have a good drawing, would be fine. And if this one should come down to 3.4, uh, so there's 3.5 is here. So we already had 3.5. So it's definitely before 3.5. And it's after 3. 
So there's 3 and there's 3.5. So where is it on that? About 3 point, um, well mine looks more like 3.3 or so. Uh, but the, the answer is 3.4. 3.4 is their answer. So what is the total time that this ball was above 10 meters? It is 3.4 minus 0 0.6. Because it's not 3.4 above 10 meters. We have to take away this time here, the time it was below 10 meters. And this becomes 2.8. And again, your answer might be slightly different. It might be plus or minus about 0.1 would probably be acceptable. That does us, does us for this question. That uh, we, I won't need any of this, so I'll go ahead and rub all this out and we'll do part D. Sorry, I said it does it for this question, for these parts of the question. Part D is going to, we're going to answer some, some questions that we could do with the graph, but we're going to do it exactly using calculus. And um, so using calculus, we often don't need to draw ticks, whereas before they would have needed to draw a question like this to do the next few parts. But we'll do it using calculus. Okay, so here's part D. We have the same equation. In fact, I should have kept the drawing here. Let me draw a rough drawing of what we had here. This is the rough drawing what we had. That's what this shape looks like. But they've asked us to differentiate this. So nothing to do with the drawing, they've asked us to differentiate this question. So we write differentiate like this, f prime t. You don't have to, oh no, they did tell us that, f prime t. Um, so how do we differentiate? We take whatever we're differentiating, in this case t is the subject, and the power that's above there. We take that number and we multiply by the number in front of t. So we get minus eight. Two times minus four is minus eight. And that power becomes one smaller. T to the power of two becomes T to the power of one. We don't bother writing the T. Okay, and that, we, what we have here, again, remember there's a one above this T. One times 16 becomes 16. T becomes smaller, the power up here, T to the power of zero. T to the power of zero is one. Or you could, lots of students just remember the t disappears. And the last one, there's a t to the power of zero already here. That zero multiplies by one, becomes zero. This disappears. Or a better way of thinking of it is, this is a constant. This is, we're asking the question, what happens when t moves? That's what differentiation is. What happens when t moves? When t moves, what happens one? Well, nothing happens then. It doesn't get differentiated. We don't need, well, it gets differentiated, it just doesn't become anything. Okay, so that's the answer. That's your full answer for part um, B, part 1, is minus 8t plus 16. D, part 2, then, asks us to use this information, because they know we could probably use information on this drawing, but to use this information to answer this question, to find the speed of the ball, of the ball when it had uh, been in the air for four seconds. So after four seconds, that uh, was over here somewhere, what is the speed of that ball? So the speed is equal to differentiation. Differentiation of distance tells us speed. The derivative of distance, which is height, the derivative of distance tells us speed. So really what they're asking us to do is tell us the derivative after four seconds. The derivative after four seconds, and we can just fill this in. We get minus eight, four, plus 16. And that is equal to, um, eight times four is 32, and we have a minus, minus 32, plus 16. And that is equal to 16 minus 32 is minus 16. Now this will get you most of the marks for that part, most of the marks for part two, but you will lose some of them for having this minus here. And it's a very slight difference, but they did not, this is the velocity. The velocity of this ball is minus 16 meters per second. Minus means it's going down. So the speed is going this way. We're, and here's how derivative looks on drawings. We get, it's a tangent. So the speed is minus, the velocity, I'm sorry, the velocity is minus 16. But they did not ask for the velocity. They asked for the speed. And the speed um, is equal to the absolute value of the velocity. 
which means it's never minus. So it's equal to 60. They're asking just the speed. The speed is an absolute number. So you will lose, I'm guessing, I'm not sure now, but I'm guessing one mark for um, writing down minus 16. You'll probably get one out, uh, you'll get four out of five probably instead of five out of five. Okay, so what's the last part then? Part three asks us to find the value of t for which the ball was descending, descending and traveling at speed eight meters. Okay, so that's actually important to have read that. Traveling at eight meters, but descending. Uh, sorry, eight meters per, se uh, per second, yes. So the velocity. So that will happen twice, in fact. It well, maybe, we'll find out. It could happen when going up, and it could happen, happen when going down. All right, so what they're asking, they're asking when the speed is equal to eight, or are they? Let me, let me rub this out, and uh, we'll make some room here. Uh, we'll keep this line because it has information for me. So part three, it is asking the speed is equal to eight, but this is not the speed, this is the velocity. So this is not correct. They are not asking when it's equal to eight, they are asking when it's equal to minus eight. Plus eight will actually give us plus number, going up is plus. And going down is a minus number. So we needed to put that minus number in. Again, you would only lose one, maybe two marks if you had a left a plus here. Probably two or three because you'll see what happens in a moment. Okay, so we need to solve this. F, the velocity is equal to this. Minus 8t plus 16 is equal to minus 8. Let's solve this here. We have minus 8t is equal, take 16 from both sides. Minus 8, minus 16. Minus 8t is equal minus 24. Divide both sides by minus 8. We get um, minus 24 divided by minus 8. That's equal. Two minuses make a plus. And 24 divided by 8 is 3. So t is equal to 3. Where is that? That is somewhere over here. There's 3. There it is here. That is minus 8. If you had have left plus eight in here, plus eight would have got you eight minus 16. It would have got you minus eight. And um, yeah, it would have got you minus eight T. It would have got you one. So one is somewhere around here. So it would have, yeah, this actually works out perfectly. It would have got you plus eight here. The, the, speed, the speed is plus eight. So the velocity is plus eight, or the speed is eight in the upwards direction after one second, that would be the wrong answer. The speed is minus eight, sorry, this, the speed is eight in the downwards direction after three seconds. That is the correct answer. You needed to change this sign to an eight. Lots of students probably mis mistook that. Don't worry, they will only take one or two marks away. You can still get a B. Um, if you make mistakes of like that in every question, or if you make mistakes like that in only one or two questions, an A is still very possible. All right, I think that's everything. Yes, that is all the questions for part seven. If you have any questions, it's a long question, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching and goodbye.